This is my Final Fantasy XIV Iron Man. The challenge is simple. Get as far as I can in Final Fantasy XIV by myself. No parties with other players or NPCs, no market board, no retainers, and minimal NPC shops. Additionally, for all dungeons and trials, I'll need to have either Silence, Echo, or Level Sync turned on. After 35 hours of work, Titan met his end. Finally free to continue through the MSQ, our next adventure begins. Day 1 starts with a quick run-through of the main scenario quests. After nearly two weeks of work to get past Titan, it felt amazing to be progressing again. Aside from getting lost in the most evil building layout I've ever seen, and fighting off a dude that can turn into a dragon, it was smooth sailing. After our brief respite of questing, we reach our next wall, the Stone Vigil. Level sync turned on, this dungeon was going to be a new level of difficulty. Any mob pulls of more than two would normally have at least one death trying to take them down, and the Dravanian outfliers had true aggro, so there was no sneaking around them. Taking out every mob on the path, it took just over 12 minutes to get to the first boss, Chudo Yudo. Chudo Yudo was a unique boss, and should be one of the easiest for the solo run. One of his main attacks has him walk to a spot in the arena, and cast a cone at his target. With how slow the cast is, this gives plenty of time to heal and even use my damage buffs. The only dangerous attacks were Rake, an instant melee hit for extra damage, and Lion's Breath. Lion's Breath is a nearly instant cast frontal cone that deals 800 damage and burns for even more damage over time. Thankfully though, it's only nearly instant. Going back in time a bit, we can employ our Brayflock's dodge of constantly running in circles around the boss to avoid every Lion's Breath. And with that, Chudo Yudo goes down on the first try. Currently, the hardest part of this dungeon was the mobs between bosses. And of course, that changed pretty quickly. After a few more near-death experiences and getting absolutely destroyed by some ice sprites, we were at the second boss, Koshe. Just in case I had any hope of clearing Stone Vigil this attempt, Koshe was happy to crush those dreams for me. Making our way through the first pull, Koshe has three main mechanics. His spiked tail is a tank buster that hits for nearly 600 damage with mitigation. Immediately after, he'll auto-attack me and channel Sonic Storm, a ground-targeted AoE. For the last mechanic, Koshe will move to the center of the arena and cast Typhoon. Typhoon spawns storms on the east wall of the arena that move towards the party. If you don't dodge them, it will knock you into the air, dealing heavy damage and briefly stunning you. After the first Typhoon, he'll use a Sonic Storm before using another Typhoon. That's the last time it will be easy, though. From the second Typhoon onwards, he cycles through all three of his mechanics in order for the rest of the fight. Spiked Tail, into Sonic Storm, into Typhoon. He can't be stunned, and he can't be slowed with arm's length, so I'm left with three mitigations. Rampart, Vengeance, and Reprisal. Or three mitigations when I remember to put Reprisal on my bar. <laughs> with Koshe's heavy hitting auto attacks, and a tank buster every 45 seconds, I was constantly on the back foot. First attempt, we died at only 66%. This fight was going to be tough, but there were a few things we could do to get there. The main upgrades I needed were a restock on Mega Potions instead of the High Potions I was using, and some fancy new boots so my equipment would be at the dungeon's maximum. Upgrades made, we went straight back for another attempt. The trash mob still took forever to beat, and could easily kill me, but one viewer came to the rescue with a new strategy. Affectionately dubbed the Hist Strat, since there were no barriers between the start of the dungeon and the first boss, we could just run past all of these mobs and start the fu- Oh. Alright, maybe it's time for a new stra- Oh? Oh? What's this? Oh, hello, Chudo Yudo. It's nice to see you again. It takes 15 seconds for a boss arena to seal, and the game prompts you to teleport into the arena if you're outside of it when it seals. If you're able to start the boss fight, die, revive, and hit the button fast enough, you can skip every mob before a boss. This only works for dungeons that don't have barriers, so I can't use this in areas like Hawk Manor or Wanderer's Palace, but it was a huge time save for anywhere I could use it. Chudo Yudo down again, we were back to the Koshe grind. After more than half an hour of attempts, our run ends at 19%. It seemed like this fight was doable, if only barely, but I was low on potions and it was getting late, so this was the end of day one.
Oh, does it always say subscribe on the logout screen? I completely forgot about that. Wow, that's crazy. Day two starts with a hard focus on leveling my gatherers. With the level of dungeons we were facing and the upcoming trial, I wanted to have my gatherers at level 50 in preparation for any crafting I might have to do. After doing a bunch of leave quests in Mordona, Miner was at level 50 and we finally had access to the masterwork books. Except for one tiny problem. The quest to get access to masterwork gear requires showing Guiding Star a primary crafting or gathering tool above level 50. A normal player would deal with this by completing any of the level 50 class quests and moving on, but we can't use quest rewards. Since we can't use quest rewards, it seemed like our only option to unlock masterworks was an achievement tool that requires about 5,250 crafts or 7,000 plus gathers. Taking a break to think of what to do, we hop over to Southern Thanalan and get Botanist to level 50. With both of my gatherers now at level 50, it was time to catch up on my crafter grinds. While gathering the materials for my armor relieve quest, we may have gotten a bit distracted. Okay, okay, Stitch. I'll, I'll, I'll... Hold on. I won't do anything too crazy. Let's go do an entire run of Sustasha while they're gone. So, yeah, okay. Maybe distracted was an understatement, but at least we finally went back and cleared it level synced. Congratulations to me. Thank you. I would like to thank all of my wonderful viewers. I'd like to thank the Academy. Before getting back on track, we grab some gold ore and discover a little gamer to join us on our journey. <laughs> Look at him. Hello. Oh, what a, what a little dude. I'm going to call you Steve. Steve supporting us in the background, it was time to get back to work. Mithril ore into ingots and plates, and electrum ore into ingots to make three sets of high mithril armor. Those three sets of armor bring us from level 46 to 51, and armor leveling is done. Next up is making some sledgehammers for my blacksmith. Alt goat horns into horn glue, and mithril ore into mithril ingots to make what? I made the wrong sledgehammer. Chat, am I an idiot? It was Cobalt Sledgehammer the whole time. No, wait, it's okay. We're saved. I can still use these. Blacksmith level 50, all according to plan. Getting back on track, we put a bit more time into figuring out how to get masterwork books. After a lot of back and forth, we finally found our path. If I could reach Lieutenant Second Class in my grand company, we could get an Artisan Primary Tool from the Quartermaster and complete the quest with that. To get a head start on the grand company grind, we take a look at the supply and provisioning missions. Iron ore into steel with our leftover bomb ash. Dying to an A-rank hunt I found in Lenosha. Crab legs into crab oil to make a steel spear. And turning it in for an easy five levels. Before moving on, we take a short diversion to grab some gold ore from a timed node. With our diversions finished, it's time to work towards stone vigil. Before another attempt, we need to make some proper boots and accessories. Ore hide into boar leather. Electrum ore into electrum ingots. And cobalt ingots into rings and plates to make some shiny new shoes. Some more electrum ore into electrum ingots and raw amber into amber to make a full set of tenacity accessories. The gear was done, and all that was left now was good food and potions. After taking a moment to grab some dark steel ore, we start with a new food item. Million corn, cinderfoot olives, and sunset wheat into cornmeal, olive oil, and flour. Then, with some necessary NPC purchases, we've got our new food, cornbread. The last item on the list was potions. Mega potions weren't enough, so we needed to get the next level. X potions. X potions require some pretty annoying materials, so instead of grinding them with my botanist, we head over to the Palace of the Dead. Floors 31 to 40 give X potions from bronze chests and mob drops, so it was the quickest way to get them. After around 36 minutes, we finished the floor set and ended up with 41 X potions and 9 Mega potions. And so, after many hours of grinding, we were back in Stone Vigil. All of our upgrades made it possible to handle 3 mob pulls without dying, so things were already looking better. After confirming our new gear, we used the Hist strat and run through to Chudo Yudo. Chudo Yudo down, it was time for the real test. Would our new gear and potions be enough for Koshe? Get the stupid Storm's Path. No, man. Ugh. 14%. It was close, but still a bit far out of reach. There were more upgrades we could make, though. Stepping out of Stone Vigil, it was time to replace my chest armor and pants. So for the final crafts of the day, Cobalt ore into ingots and plates, mithril ingots into rings, toad skin into toad leather, toad leather into a toad skin jerkin, turning in a grand company delivery for leather worker experience, ore leather for a leave quest, heist leather and rubber into pice skin crackos for experience, all so I could unlock raptor leather. Raptor leather and woolen yarn give us all the materials we need to make my new tank pants. 
After crafting some extra mega potions, we used the cobalt from earlier to make our new chest piece. Gear upgrades done, this was the best I could get for Stone Vigil. This time, we had a new strategy. To maximize my healing, I would swap back and forth between X potions and mega potions. I would use X potions with Thrill of Battle to get the most health back, and mega potions any other time for the shorter cooldown. Even with the better healing and new gear, the fight was almost entirely dependent on luck. I wasn't even getting close to my best run, but all we needed was the perfect attempt. My reprisal of this kills me. If I hadn't dodged that auto, maybe luck is on our side this time, gamers, because that auto absolutely would have been the death of me. Yes, dude! Yes! Oh, God, yes. Yes. So we finally managed to take down Koshe, all because of one dodged auto. Now it was a race against the clock. Koshe had cost me more than half of the instance time limit, and I still had one more boss to fight. Why must I run into more ice sprites after all of this hard work? Can I not get a moment of respite? After another death to some ice sprites, we made it to the final boss with only 28 minutes remaining. 28 minutes to learn and defeat the final boss. If I failed, I would have to start over and face Koshe again. Just like with Chudo Yudo, the most dangerous attack was a casted front cone that I could dodge by circling the boss. Very nice. Okay. Gorgeous. Stone Vigil cleared, gamers. Stone Vigil cleared. What a day. What a day, dude. How do I get swift completion at 74 minutes? With only 14 minutes remaining on instance, I didn't have time for a second attempt. If I hadn't cleared right then and there, we would have had to restart. Stone Vigil was complete, and we could finally continue with the MSQ. Garuda was our next target, but it had been a full day of progress, so this was the end of day two. Day 3 starts, and the first thing on the list is getting to Garuda. After getting access to the Isles of Umbra, My hunting log has been waiting for you for weeks, good sir. And discovering a dungeon I had never heard of before. What the heck is this, Pharaoh Sirius? Crazy how they made that whole model and then it's never seen again. The dungeon boss of Sirius? Oh, okay, fair test. <laughs> we now have confirmed that I have never done Sirius. Our questing was over and Garuda was unlocked. Garuda is one, if not the, hardest fight we've ever faced. An undodgeable magic attack, friction, an undodgeable cleave, downburst, and an undodgeable AoE, wicked wheel. The only one of her attacks we could avoid was slipstream, which stuns if it hits. At 80%, she teleports away and reappears on the north side of the arena. Then, she casts Mistral Song, hitting for 900 damage if you don't use the rocks to block it. Phase 2 starts with her spawning plumes that will try to break the rocks. If I don't kill them fast enough, I'll lose my rocks and die later in the fight. To make it worse, Garuda can still hit me with friction and downburst even if I'm out of melee range. At 65%, she repeats the Mistral Song and Plume Spawn. With another death to her constant downburst spam, it was time to get some upgrades, and we had a lot to do. We start our upgrades with a focus on Grand Company leveling. As mentioned earlier, if we can get to Second Lieutenant, we can get Masterwork gear. We visited Halatali for hunting logs and discussed some strats for bosses. My favorite strat for this boss, normally, if you're doing Halatali and you've just got, like, a party of gamers, just normal folks, what you should do if you're the tank, pull the boss all the way back to here, and then the path that he has to take to go back to center, to actually enter the phase where you can't hit him, takes so long that you can kill him in two cycles instead of three. Yeah, and then also you drop a stun as soon as he starts leaving. After beating the hunting log enemies, we left Holotali. Next was fishing until level 20, crow feathers into a crow's fly lure, crow's fly lure for rainbow trout, and turning it in for a nice amount of XP and grand company seals. A few jade and sagoli sage later, 
we were out of turn-ins and still needed 2600 seals. Another quick visit to Cutter's Cry and we have all the seals we need for our promotion. Expert deliveries unlocked means we can turn in all of the useless dungeon gear we had for seals and never worry about earning seals again. Sergeant First Class unlocked, we were two ranks away from our artisan gear. The next rank requires us to clear the male Darkhold before we can be promoted and I was happy to give it another attempt. Before starting though, we took a moment to try and find a legendary item. The blacksmith leaves in white brim had a 4% chance of rewarding us with a notched bill, an ingredient for the level 47 weapon, Vintage Bill. Filled with desperation to get Bill his cool new haircut, we gave the leaves a few attempts, but no luck so far. Oh, we also made new gloves and a new helmet, but that's not important. With that, it was almost the end of day three, but an incredibly generous chat member, Phantom, had picked out a new hairstyle for Solo. So after unlocking a psychopath with scissors and a quick visit to the Mog Station, it was time to give Solo a new hairdo. He is now flawless. Now it was the end of day three. Day four begins and we're tunnel visioned on getting Bill his new haircut. After just three leave turn-ins and some luck from Rune, we find it. Vintage Bill has arrived and he looks gorgeous. Next, we were back in Palace of the Dead for more X potions. Floor 41 to 50 mostly gave out max potions, so we had to restart from floor one. Now with 31 X potions and 53 megas, it was time to test out Zemeo. Even with the new gear and stalling out the crystal for my mitigations to come back up, Patrol was still dealing way too much damage. With Zemeo seeming like a wall for now, we went back to test Garuda again. After many more deaths, we gave the fight a shot with Silence Echo. Even with higher levels and more HP, Garuda was still tough though it allowed us to see a lot more of the fight. There were a few more things to test before we committed to a silence echo clear, but for now, it was the end of day four. In between days, I took some time whenever I had it to farm more potions in the Palace of the Dead. Day five starts with an incredible piece of fan art from the Discord. I mean, just look at this. How can you not love this? And by request of a very generous member, Rune, we got Solo some balloons to ride around on. We had a secret weapon to try and make the Garuda fight easier. So we start the day by grabbing some Ochu vines from Ochus, Formic Acid from Ants, Pudding Flesh from the Grand Company, and Cinnabar for Quicksilver to make potent poisoning potions and potent blinding potions. The potent blinding potions would reduce the chance for Garuda to hit us with all of her attacks for 12 seconds. If we could get one or two lucky downburst dodges throughout the fight because of these blinding potions, that almost guaranteed us a clear. We also took a quick stop to do our daily treasure hunt. I need this for actual gear and it would have required fishing. Yes, this was actually the best treasure chest in the entire universe. I'm so happy. Next, we're looking for better food items. First, we make a quick kebab to turn in for levels. And with our newfound recipes, we decide to make some Lenotian toast starting with, uh, huh. That's a lot of stuff. Walnut, wheat, sap, egg, milk, flour, butter, walnut bread, olive oil, syrup, and our Lenotian toast is made. The blinding potions and extra health from our new toast was getting us further in the fight, but it still wasn't enough. So one more time, mirror apples to apple juice for a leaf quest, garlic, fairy apples, laurel, and sour red into cider vinegar and eft steaks. This was the absolute limit of level sync. There were no more upgrades, just us and Garuda. But in the end, we still couldn't win, and we really couldn't get close. So now we were on to our last resort. Were all of our upgrades enough to defeat her with just Silence Echo? This is looking bad so far, gamers. Maybe we, oh, very nice timing for her to mistral. Maybe we blinding pot when she comes off? Nice dodge, huge, okay. Need to take out these ads quickly.
We dodge the slipstreams. I could survive a bit longer. Take your time to answer the poll. It's all right. I'll, I'll live this. <laughs> we, we had plenty of recovery time from Mistral Shrieks. We're happy with this. We're happy with this. There's not a single no in the books. Garuda is cleared, gamers! Okay! Very nice! Thankfully, yes. And with the final playtime of around 100 hours, Lady of the Vortex is cleared. With Garuda down, we're inching closer and closer to the end of A Realm Reborn. Before we rush on to Castrum, we'll be finishing our business with Zemel Darkhold and unlocking our masterwork recipes. All of this was recorded live, so if you want to be part of it and see how everything happens, there's a stream for Solo only on every Thursday and Sunday, and the time should be on screen now. It's right here on YouTube, so there's no need to go anywhere else for it. Oh, and maybe subscribe. Yeah. <laughs>